Fountains are a wonderful display of Newtonian physics. The water streams are parabolic, just what we'd expect from the underlying equations. Solving these equations is a tough challenge for students. The point of this video is to give you some tools to keep in mind as you solve these problems. Then you can use the simulation to practice. Initially, the water launches horizontally from an aperture two meters above the ground. We know the water is traveling horizontally because the launch angle is zero degrees. The launch speed is one meter per second. We can adjust this up to four meters per second and see what happens. Notice that the water lands at different positions. We can practice calculating where the water should land and then move the catcher to see if we are right. So how do we make these calculations? A clue is in the graph at the top left. This is a graph of the horizontal component of velocity and the vertical component of velocity as functions of time. Two important facts are buried in this graph. First, you can see that the horizontal component of velocity doesn't change. It is fixed. This is because the only important force acting on the water drops as they travel is gravity, which acts downward. No force acts horizontally, so there is no horizontal acceleration. In reality, there will be some horizontal acceleration due to air resistance. It is a small effect. You can play around with a simulation called Cliff Diver to get a sense of how much it matters. We will ignore it in this simulation. So the velocity versus time graph for the horizontal component of velocity is flat. The area bounded by this graph is rectangular. The area of this rectangle is equal to the distance horizontally traveled by the water drops. This should equal the position we place the catcher. The trick is that we don't know how wide to make the rectangle. In other words, we don't know how long the drops are in the air before they hit the ground. We can't figure that out from the horizontal motion. We need to predict it from the vertical motion. As you can see, the vertical velocity starts at zero and becomes quickly more and more negative. The graph of velocity versus time is aligned with negative slope. The slope is the acceleration. Under the influence of gravity, and in the absence of significant air resistance, the acceleration is roughly negative 10 meters per second squared. This means the vertical velocity drops by 10 meters per second after every second that passes. How can we tell how long the water is in the air? Remember that the vertical displacement of the water Essentially, the distance from its starting point is equal to the area bounded by the velocity graph. This area is triangular. We can compute this area by using the triangular area formula. The area formula is one-half times base times height. But again, how do we know how wide to make the base? How long is the water in the air? Now we have an answer. The time traveled in air, the base of this triangle, is exactly that needed so that this triangular area equals the starting height of the water. So we set the fountain height equal to the area and solve for the missing amount, the time. Now that we have the time, we can figure out the area of the horizontal velocity graph. Now we have the catcher position. Of course, we have formulas which allow us to do all this without drawing areas. In fact, these formulas are just representations of the area formulas. We have displayed them here, but if you want more context for them, click on Concepts from within the simulation and follow along to the reading. What happens when we increase the launch angle from zero degrees to something larger? Well. Now the initial vertical velocity component is no longer zero. It has some value. This quickly decreases to zero and then becomes negative as the water goes up, then comes down. The graph at right represents, separately, the horizontal and vertical positions of the water stream with time. 
The horizontal position increases linearly with time. This is because the horizontal speed is constant. The vertical position changes parabolically or quadratically. This is because the vertical velocity is constantly changing. An interesting advanced question we can ask is, at what launch angle is the horizontal range the highest? You might guess 45 degrees, and this is true if we launch from the ground. But since the stream's starting height is different from its ending height, the situation is more complex. Play around and see what you can discover.